Okay, so the first thing I did was look up an arm online, and I took the arm and cut it into pieces. So basically, I took the main arm and the lasso tool, and I did selections so that they would overlap. So I know it's going to bend at the elbow, but I want a little bit of the overlap here so when it bends, it kind of covers up the other object that it is layered upon. So I did that, and I hit Control alt and j and that put it in a new layer. So I did that for the upper arm. You'll see the layer here. And I did it for the forearm. So I did something like this. Mm -hmm. Forearm. And something for the hand. And I had to keep selecting this layer to do the hand and everything else. Okay. I did a bad cutaway, but again, this is just for a tutorial, so no biggie. And then I hit Control Alt and J. Okay. So I hide this layer. I have those layers. Save this as a PSD. Save as. Oh, Photoshop. I guess I saved it as a Photoshop PDF, but I meant to save it as a PSD. So right up here. That's okay though, no biggie. And I called it something different. Oh no. Looks like I did do it correct. Yeah, there it is right there. Arm layered, okay. And then I went to After Effects, and in After Effects, I just have to work with it. So I imported it. I made my composition first, so I clicked this, and did 1920 by 1080, okay. And I imported my composition, which is this arm layered from Photoshop, and I imported it as a comp. So if I double click here, and I did this, right? It's going to ask me, well, what do I want to bring it in as? And I hit import, and it says, what would you like? And generally, it's set to footage, and I could choose layer by layer. Don't want to do that, though. I just went to composition, like that, and hit OK. And I got this as a composition size. Now, I don't know. Let me check something here. Yeah, I don't necessarily want that. So I could take this and delete it. Yes, and I'll bring it in, so I'll double-click it, and bring it in as Composition, Retain Layer Size. And I want them to be editable instead of merging, so that they're separate layers. Now, I can bring this to the bottom. Except for that, that's my original layer. I should have called that background. A reference. Now, this is kind of funky, not a big deal, but you know, I could just kind of move these things around. So have the upper arm, there's the hand, I'll drag that to the bottom, and the forearm, okay? So I'll take the upper arm first, and drag it up here, and the mid, and I get this into place very easily. So if I did, I could drag the upper arm below the forearm so I could see. I'll use my arrow keys now, okay? I can use up, down, left, and right arrow keys to move it pixels, or I can hold shift. Okay, and let me do it to the forearm. So I'll just kind of raise that up. I'll select the forearm, and I can align this pretty close. If I want to be perfect, I could really just take this and change the opacity. So I'll hit T for opacity, bring it down a little bit, and you can see in here. Control minus and control plus key in this case. Just get kind of close. And if I move this around, you can kind of see where it's going to line up and whatnot. So if I hit my arrows, pretty good. Better and better. Yeah. Now I'm okay with that. Again, just a tutorial. So I'll click this and I'll hit fit. And I'll go to the hand, so I can bring the hand to the top. And you can work with this in either way, but I'll change this opacity back to 100% for the forearm. Drop that down, and my hand I will deal with now. So I'll just take this, and I'll drag it close. Okay. Then I'll use my arrows. Click it to click right. I'll hit T for opacity, and bring that down. And this is funky, funky, so I'm just going to 
Get a little bit closer here. And see where I can align it. And something like that's cool. Now, if I wanted to be really nice about things, I probably would have cut the other part of the arm right here. And I could really, I mean, I guess I could mask it if I want to get a little creative with things. I could take that forearm and I'll go to my pen tool. With the forearm selected, I'm going to make a mask, right? So the forearm, I'm not seeing both sections. So let me first take the upper arm and I'll bring the opacity down as well. And then I can see the overlap and then I'll select the forearm. And I can say, well, maybe I want it just to be around so that I don't have those hard edges popping through here in a minute. I can just click with my pen tool and do a nice little round. If you remember, this is just basic masking. Okay, and then it cuts that stuff away. Not a big deal. I could round this out more because I might get a little edgy thing there. I'm not too worried, to be honest, in this case. Again, it's just a little tutorial here. And yeah. So the rounds are pretty nice just because I don't want hard edges popping out. And you're going to see probably some hard edges on the arm right here. So I would have to do it to the upper arm because you can see that kind of coming down. This can be a hard edge where it comes. Let me show you. Hide the forearm. These. That would be a hard edge. So I guess it didn't really take me much time to do that. I'll just kind of do this real quick. Da, 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 da. Right? Hum a little music. There we go. And that little round should be pretty good. And then I'll bring this back. Very good. Now the hand is the only thing I have left. I'll bring that back. Select that layer. And I could draw based off of this, right? And then when you start doing your animation, you're going to see that you might get something kind of funky in here that you can actually adjust these masks. And really what I could have done, I could have duplicated, so brought the arm in, like the whole arm, which is this guy right here. I could have brought that in. And then I could have duplicated that layer. Oops. Pardon me. I could have duplicated that layer three times. And then... Each duplicate I could have done a mask on. See that? Yeah. So I will undo the mask or just delete the mask and delete that layer because I don't need it. But I could have done that three times one for the upper arm, the forearm, and the hand. Been very simple. And I'll bring these back. And in Adobe, Adobe products, you can just click on one of these eye icons and just drag down by holding down your left mouse button and they'll turn a bunch of them on or off. It's a nice little function. Click and drag, click and drag. Okay. So if you have a lot of layers here, it makes it a little more easy to work with. I'll select all of these and I'll hit T for opacity. I'll bring them all up to 100%. Okay. And they all are at 100%. That's good. I'll collapse them. And now the work real quick. Upper arm. And it doesn't really matter the order here. I mean, I could put the upper arm back on top, and the forearm, and then the hand. It doesn't really matter. The look, you know, you might get a better look with the reverse depending on the way you cut things out, and that's okay. If I'll take the upper arm, and I want the pivot point to be where I need it to move. So the upper arm I want to move from up here. I don't want to rotate this layer, for instance, right there in the middle. That doesn't give me proper movement for my arm if you rotate your shoulder. That would be a broken shoulder real quick, right? And really odd, kind of like morbid, scary movie style. So let's take this guy right here, which is the pan behind tool. It really just takes our anchor point and, and move it up here. In Maya, we use what's called pivot points, right? Some of you guys are, are used to that. So I'll just move that up and I'll just you know think of it as a pivot point. And the pivot point is there now, which is an anchor point in this program. And now the arm will swing like a shoulder, just like if it was in its socket on our body. Okay. This guy is going to follow this one. You know, so if you want to do it in an order of who's going to follow who, you know, 
we can layer these whatever way and then we're just going to do a parenting. So I'll take the next one, the forearm, and the forearm I want to move from right here, just like if it was the elbow. So I'm still in my pan behind tool, which the hotkey is Y, and I'll take this up here and I'll just kind of move it where it makes sense. Okay, And for us, the joint might sit back here a little further, and that's okay, but animation-wise, depending on what you're doing, it might be a little better right here. I mean, do some tests. At any time, you can move this thing back a little bit. So not a big deal, okay? And I always do something and then test it. So I'll hit R on my keyboard and do this whole bit, and yay. Okay. And now thinking about it, I might want to bring that up, and let's see. A little better, so I'll stick with that one up top. Which means I probably better, probably better put the hand there. So the hand has a wrist, right? And we can move from the wrist, and I'll just take that there, and pretend that's the wrist part, at least as close as we can for you know these 2D images, and then do a test. So, okay. So what I do next is that I have my anchor points, or if we still want to call them pivot, point, pivot points using Maya terminology, we can. But in here, anchor points, we have them in place so that the rotations are going to be nice. Then we just have to do the parenting. Okay, So I'll just go to my select tool, which is V on my keyboard, and I say what needs to follow what. So basically, the hand needs to follow the forearm, and the forearm needs to follow the upper arm. Okay, So we have a way of working. I have track mats here that I can work with, and we're not going to deal with track mats or modes. So you'll see down here we have toggle switch and modes. So we're in the modes section of things right here modes and track mats. So I'll click this little icon right here, okay? And I have now the toggle switches. So there's my toggle switches and parenting. So I could do it two different ways. I can drop this down and go to forearm, in which I'm saying that I want the hand layer to be parented to the forearm. So it'll follow the forearm just like we would in Maya or something, okay? Or I can use this little pick whip here. And the pick whip's pretty sweet because I could just grab it with my left mouse button and drag onto the layer that I want the hand to follow or be parented to. And then my parent drop down box here will update. So I'll drag that to the forearm, boom, like that. And it's just like me dropping this down saying forearm, but you saw that that populated for me. So it's pretty good. Then I'll take this one and drag it down to the upper arm, just like that. And now the upper arm is going to be the parent. The forearm is going to be the child of the upper arm and the hand is going to be the child of the forearm. So if I took the upper arm and I did a rotation and obviously I could set keys right so let's set some keys. And After Effects is going to give me an auto key feature until I need to add more keys and I'll take the upper arm first and I'll just kind of rotate it up right and oh sorry let me just undo that part. I'll just go a little bit ahead and I'll rotate that up. And I could do the whole thing at the same time. So I'll just you know rotate that up and rotate that up. And I have a bit of a change here. So there we go. Everything is going to have a keyframe. And I'll just drag over a little bit. And then I'll say, well, maybe I want this thing to swing back. OK. And you see how that works. Which is a little bit broken, right? So I'll just kind of. I won't go past something super uncomfortable for the arm, unless I'm going for over-exaggerations. But I can do a little bit of bend so it's a little bit natural. okay? Because this is uncomfortable for people, so that's going to be bad animation. Unless you have to hyper-extend something or you have to break an arm. But uh, again, we think about functionality all the time. So what I have here animation-wise is this. Something I could loop, actually. And if I wanted to loop it, I mean, I really could take it, all these keyframes here, and hit Control-C to copy them. And then go over here and Control-V to paste them. Oops, I didn't mean to do that there. Uh, keyframes. So I'd be able to copy my keyframes. Or I could actually take them and drag them over. Okay. I can copy keyframes, these ones, and then paste them in the section, which I don't need to do here. I would be able to, you know, just kind of move them about. 
but if I wanted this thing to loop, I could really just even render out the animation and do a few layer techniques. But in here, I sh it shouldn't be the, let me take the rotations, and I don't need, I should be able to just take the key. Let me go here. Yeah. Oops. Keep hitting the wrong key. Now looking at my keyboard here. I want to paste my layers. I suppose. If I do it one by one, it's fine. Control C, Control V, Control C, and Control V. A little obnoxious, but that works. Or I could go to the graph editor and you know kind of copy those over and move them so we get a little bit more spacing. So now this thing starts here and ends there. Okay. And that's pretty simple. I mean, now I can animate this, and if I brought a body into play, I could put the body in here, and then the arms just can be parented to the body. Okay? So that's a little basic on parenting, kind of like a, a little rig to follow each other, and then we get this kind of FK animation going on here. And, yeah, if you're familiar with Maya and other programs, if we just built a skeleton, we'd be in FK animation until we make IK handles and whatnot. But then that's a whole different rigging discussion that we can have inside of Adobe After Effects and products like it if you're using Toon Boom or something like that. Okay? Have a good one, everybody.